Okay, I got all of my pockets glued onto the fronts of my pages with the decorative paper. I chose to alternate. I just used two, the hearts and the polka dots, and I'm going to alternate them. But they're all on. And now again, we're going to put these off to the side until we're done. So we have our mats. I don't know why. Oh, I know why I didn't do them right away. Because I wanted to use scrap pieces of paper after I cut everything. So that's going to go away. And now we're going to make the hardest part of the mini album. If you have stuck with me this long and you are die hard to make this mini album and follow this tutorial, this next part's going to be a little more complex than any of it's been but I assure you it's really not that hard follow me through with it and you can do it and that page is going to be this I call it the credit card page I got this tutorial on how to do this from um, her name is Chandra I think she's one happy scrapper or crafter I don't know I'll look it up and I'll let you know when I come back but anyway so this page is going to be this credit card slot page and in it the photo tags come out and they differ in size like that and then this one's really small you could probably just journal on it or put a small skinny crop picture on it but see how they they alternate and it's really cool and they slide down in these pockets that I have the slits cut so in your per it's so being as though it's a purse I just found it very fitting that it looks like a credit card slot like your wallet you know where you slide your stuff in so oh yeah did I mention you're probably gonna want a piece of ribbon I don't think I put that in the tools but anyway so that's what it's going to look like and let me get everything cut out so I can get on with that part. Can you see the little slits? So it is just a super cool technique. So stick with me and I'll get you through making it. And then they all go back in there. All right, I'll be back. I'm going to get everything cut. Okay, I'm going to get you through this as best as I possibly can. What I did ahead of time, because it took me forever to measure it and do it myself, but when I made it, I made a pattern. So I will be able to get you through this pattern very simply, but I'm going to still show you how to do it. So if you're wanting to duplicate this, I recommend you make a pattern first. Then you could just lay it on there and trace where you need to cut. Okay, that's my little tidbit. So to start off, because the first album I made was in black, and actually that's better because it's going to show you better. So first of all, oh goodness, I'm tired, I'm sorry. You want to take a piece of cardstock, and you want it to be 8.5, which you don't have to cut it if you're using 8.5 by 11, because it's going to be... Eight and a half this way, and then I cut it at six and three quarters. So you really just need to cut it on the eleven and a half side down six and three quarters. But anyways, you want this piece of cardstock to measure eight and a half by six and three quarters. Okay. So you want the eight and a half to be going up and down. Well, first of all, now what we're gonna do is we're going to score half an inch all the way around, and I'm gonna do this with you. So you want to take your eight and a half, and I wrote on the back, this is going to be flipped over so you're not going to see it. I'm going to take my scoreboard and score half an inch all the way around. You should know the drill by now. It's each side, top, bottom, and both sides are going to get scored at the half an inch mark. And the reason, because we want this to poof up, if you get what I'm saying, because we're going to be sliding in, so we can't just have this flat and glued down. You need that extra flaps 
that are going to glue down so this is going to give you some room in between because you're going to be layering these sliding them in and it's going to poof it up does that make sense like you can answer me but anyway so i did that i scored it at a half an inch all the way around and i'm not cutting anything out i'm going to leave it as it is but we have those score marks go ahead and i'm actually i'm not going to burnish this because uh, maybe i will just so you can see but I think what I'm going to do is draw my draw and pencil because I'm working on white and it'll be easier for you to see when I'm doing this. And of course, I don't have a pencil in front of me because they're not sharpened. Oh, wait, is this one? Yeah, this one is. So this is going to be my back, so it's going to be okay if I draw where my score marks are. And I'm only doing this so you can see. It'll just be easier for you to see when I'm drawing my lines. That went off, but it, do it doesn't matter. You're getting the idea. That's where my score marks are. So I'm scored on all sides. And that's where my score marks are. Okay, got that? All right, now I really got to think. I hope I don't screw this up. So, in the fast world nowadays, now that I have my handy dandy little pattern, I will just lay this on top and draw where I need this stuff to go. Um, but I'm going to teach you how to do it, believe it or not. Let me figure, let me see. All right, so basically, we want, we're want we going to have to punch two these little holes. And I have a crocodile. Where is it? Here it is. And you want to use, I don't, if you don't have one of these, then, I mean, you can just draw your line. I don't know. I really don't know what to tell you. You can use a little hole punch. I guess if the holes are bigger, it's not going to matter. But hopefully you have one of these because you're going to use the smallest little hole over here. The smallest hole size. Okay. So, from our crease mark, what you want to do is you're going to draw um, from in your score line one half an inch down. Let me make sure it's a half an inch. No, it's one and a half. There's my one. Duh, I already had it written out, but I didn't read it. Okay, so line your ruler up into your um, score mark, into your score line. Don't go over it. Go on this side of it. And you're going to take a pen, so I'm going to do it right here with you on this black so you can see. And we're going to go one and a half inches, and I'm going to take my pen sole. Make your page. Well, right now we're just kind of getting the basis. So you're going to write in your score. Don't go over it. Go right in. And go down one and a half inches and make a little mark. And then you're going to go another one and a half inches. And these are where your lines are going to be. So that's one and a half. That would be one. Let me think. I'm having a brain fart here. Okay, so that's... Maybe I should put my glasses on, right? Okay. All right, so here we go. We got one and a half. And then that's one and another one and a half. So at the three mark. So at one and a half, three. Then we're going to go down another one and a half inches, which would put us at four and a half. And then, so we're going to have one, two, three, four lines all together. So we're at four and a half, and now we want to go to six. Get it? We just went one and a half, made a line. One and a half, made a line. 
one and a half made a dot or whatever in there. So I know that my lines are going to go there because you want one and a half inches between each of your slits. And that's what we're doing. We're going to cut slits. I didn't cut these because I wanted to show the line on the white paper. So I have to recut them, but I'll show you. So there's my pattern. My score marks are half an inch around. I went one and a half. That's going to be a line. One and a half, one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. Okay? So now we need to go three-fourths of an inch in from your score mark. Let me make sure. Did I do? I did one inch. I'll be right back. Okay, I figured out what I did. Because my crocodile won't work to go all that distance, I have to. You have to fold in this, and then you're going to take the crocodile, and you're going to go three-fourths of an inch in which I know that that's where it's at okay because if I had this out all the way my crocodile is not going to make it to where I need that hole you see so that's why I was confused so um, when that's folded in that's where you're going to want to put your holes but we can do it like this so we're going to want to draw our line so we know where to poke poke our holes. This is only the third time I've done this, so bear with me. Okay, so we know that our slits need to be four inches. So you're going to have two holes punched on each side, and that's where you're going to put your blade, and that line needs to be four inches to get our papers in. So, with that being said, I'm going to... I know that these are where my pretend lines went. So how did I do this? Okay, so I'm going to go three quarters of an inch. Let me just, okay. I'll just do it like this. I know that here's my tick mark that I want. Let me really zoom in for you. These are the little tick marks that I made that I know is going to be one half an inch, one half an inch, one half an inch in between. So, I'm going to take my pencil, I'm going to line my paper up so that I can get my ruler straight across so I know I'm really going straight with these grid lines on my paper. And, let me move this down a smidgen. Is my head getting in the way? Alright, so I'm lightly going to draw my pencil mark so I can get my line going all the way across. There's going to be one. Yep, but that's one and a half. One and a half. Get my ruler straight. Make sure I'm still recording. Okay, I drew the line sideways so I know my ruler's pretty straight with my lines going. I'm actually going to flip this around because it's easier to draw the line there. Okay, that's straight. So there's my one and a half there. Is there 
I know this seems hard, but it really isn't. You're probably a better measurer than I am to figure this out quicker. Like I said, that's why I have the pattern, so I could just draw. Okay. Draw my line there. Make sure this is one and a half from that one. What am I doing? Ooh, I'm getting hot. I need the fan on. Okay, so I know those lines are perfectly straight. All right, so that's what I did. I drew my lines going across, so I got one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. And now from here, I need... I'm going to want the, I'm going to draw my little tick marks um, three quarters of an inch in from, from here. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to do these circles. So here's my ruler. Fold your thing in, go on your line, and fold, so you know you're right in your, um, crease, you know. Line your ruler up with, leave a little bit of room, but go along your line. That's up. So I know right on that line, I want to go three-fourths of an inch in, which is right there. So I'm going to want my circle to be right there. And you just do that on all of your lines. Did that make sense to you? I'm folding my Thing up so my ruler can go in there and I button my ruler up right against that and I'm putting my look let me get everything out of my way and I'm getting my um, on that line that I drew I'm drawing my tick mark right there at three-fourths of an inch and then fill it in with a little circle so you can line up your thing you can get rid of these little tick marks that we knew where we were going to put our lines. Okay, so just keep doing that all the way down all of your four lines. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four. That's where I'm going to punch my holes. Now go to this side or just flip it around and do the same exact thing. Hold your paper up, go in at three-fourths, make your tick mark, and make it a circle. Hope I haven't confused you. Had to get it figured out. Okay, <clears throat> so we have our circles one on each thing. Those you can get rid of. We don't even need them anymore. And we got our lines drawn. So now this is when you can take your crop it out or hole punch. I fold it in like that so it can reach. And I use the smallest little because it's not a very big hole. And you just want to, you can see through that little hole. Can you see? Yep, there's my hole where I drew. So I know I want to punch it right there. And just do that all the way down. See where you can see through the white if you don't have that drawn. And there's that hole. 
and just punch it. Ah, shoot. I looked up at the camera and went over too far. So, I'll go ahead and redo this, but um, off camera to get it perfect. But know that, don't look up at your camera when you're doing this. Get it right on your circle and it would have been fine. Actually, I'm still going to, I think it'll be okay. So I did it in the right spot. I can't look up at the camera. Alright, so I go to this side and do these. Hopefully I'll be able to fix that. My hands are getting shaky. There. All right. So, if I have to fix that, then I will. I will. I'm going to go ahead and go off camera. Pretend that we didn't do that. I'm going to make another one. But that's how you do it. Okay. So, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Since I screwed this up, <clears throat> I need to make another one for the album. But I'm going to do it with you right on camera so you can watch it again. All right, so first of all, we need to cut our paper. This is an eight and a half by 11. We're gonna cut it by eight and a half by six and three quarters. We already know that this is eight and a half. So we're gonna do six and three quarters, which is right there. And then we're gonna score it one half an inch on each side. Again, one half an inch on every side. Okay, and again, I will pencil in the score marks just so you can see. This is going to be the underneath back, so we're good to draw on these score marks. Okay, so we have eight and a half by six and three quarters. Um, again, we want to go measure down one and a half inches, so put your let me zoom in. Let's measure, put your ruler right up in there. Let's do it over here on this end so that I could line. So here we go from your um, gusset, go down one and a half inches, make a little tick mark there, do another one and a half inches. I'm just getting this so I could draw my lines across. So that's one and a half, one and a half, one, two, three, four. So I have my four lines. So if you want me to figure it out for you, go and draw a tick mark at one and a half, at three, four and a half, and six. And then they should be evenly spaced out one and a half inches apart. So now if you want to draw them down this side as well, you can, but I'm okay with not. So then you can see where I have my tick mark. So now I'm going to draw my line straight across and I'm lining it up. If you don't have a, um, a grid like I do that I can use my lines then I would draw your tick marks on this side too to draw your lines nice and straight but I'm using this so I won't waste the time and now I'm just gonna draw my lines straight across can you see 
There we go. There's one. Two. Getting this straight. Three, and here's four. Okay, so they're equally spaced at one and a half inches apart. And now this is when I want to draw my little tick marks to where I'm gonna put my dots. So I need to fold my thing in and then we're going to go um, at three-fourths, go on each side, fold your gusset up and line your ruler right up into your gusset. On each line you're going to go in three-fourths of an inch and draw your, um, so that's three-quarters of an inch there. Can I zoom in closer for you? Three quarters of an inch there, three quarters of an inch there, three quarters of an inch there. Flip it over and do it to the other side, same thing. Three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch. Okay, now I'm going to make them a circle so I can see it through my puncher. If you don't have one of these crocodiles, you know, you could just poke a little, I don't know, find like a needle or something and poke a little hole and make it that size. You'll have to improvise. But see how nice they're evenly spaced all the way apart? So that's where I'm going to want my tick marks and then that should give me four inches between well really four and a quarter and that's fine so that'll give my lines um, four and a quarter that I'm gonna slice okay so now we're gonna take that crocodile thing or if you don't have one punch your own holes just make them little circle holes with something you can improvise but if you have the crocodile I use the smaller hole set hole setting you can see one's thicker one skinnier I use the skinny one all right now this you're gonna have to fold your thing in because it won't reach if you don't and I'm not gonna look this time but you can see where I'm lining the hole up in the hole I'm getting my circle that I drew right in there and I'm punching it so now I'm not gonna look this time at the camera I'm just gonna punch them to get them straight. Okay, I did a good job on that one. This one looks a little off, but it's it'll be okay. So now what you're going to do, you're going to need your score blade and a straight-edged ruler. You can open these back up now. And what you want to do is take your <clears throat> cutting edge of your ruler. You're going to line that up. And what you want to do, because you're going to make two slits to make your slit. So you want to go... Like put the edge of the ruler like halfway in the middle of that dot and do it the same way like not because you're going to cut because you're going to make two slits. So you're going to make and it's only going to be four inches so you don't want to 
go past your dots. Go inside and you cut the slit and stop right when you get to the dot. Move it over a hair to the other end of your dot. So you can really go end to end of your little dot. Because you just want it to be a slit. So now I moved it over a hair. I'm at the end of my dots and I'm going to have like a sixteenth of an inch maybe. And then make your other cut. There, I stopped at my dot. Now you peel that little sliver out like that and there you go so I stayed within my where am I I st there I stayed within the dot I just lined the ruler up in the center of the dot and then I cut all the way across to both sides and then that gives me that slit okay so do that all the way down to cut all your slits and I'll just do them on camera for you again I line that up to not quite to the end and I want to cut go slow keep your ruler pressure so you don't move that's the hardest part I should get my metal ruler because it has the cork on the back okay and then I go over slightly And I stop right in my hole. And then it peels out that ever so small. So it's really not that hard. It just takes a little patience. And once you figure it out, now once you have this made, you'll have a pattern and you can do it all the time. Cut two of them. And then you could just trace it. If you plan to make more or do this again. It's a really cool cool little way okay one more and then we'll do the covers for them which is the same see how nice that looks on that side of course I'm working with white so I'm a bit dirty <clears throat> The first time I did this, I had to sit and measure and figure figure it all out myself. For this size, if you're making a different size um, page, then you'll have to adjust your measurements accordingly. I'm not good with a straight edge. There. I got a little piece of paper, but we're going to cover that, so it's okay. It ripped. But see how nice? See? Okay. So then what's going to happen is these are all going to get... You want to cut these little corners out again your can you see this cut your corners out on your score marks just the corners like we did with those other pockets And then these are going to fold in on each other. And again, you're going to want these, um, the sides to go down first and the bottom to go on top of those. Okay, so now fold them in and you're going to put your score tape along each of these edges once they're folded in. 
I'm not going to undo it yet. <clears throat> you could just do it right in the middle. Because now we got to make the front sleeves to cover them up. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay, so that's all prepped and it's going to be ready to go. When we're done, we'll tack all this down and then it's going to it's going to um get glued down to your page. Okay? But now we have to make the we have to do the same thing to make the covers. When I mean by the covers, I mean these decorative pieces that go over the top. If you want, you can just make another one of those with decorative paper and cut the same thing and just have it covering all with your slots, but I kind of like it like this. It like frames it in. So that's what we're going to do now. Let me go get that all prepped and come back and we'll do that. All right, so now to make the slot covers to go over this, I'm just taking my scrap pieces of paper, and you want to cut four of them at one inch by five inches. Whatever papers you want. If you want them all the same, do them all the same, but we need to cut it one, by five. And let me just make sure that that was the measurement that I had in the book because sometimes I write it down and then I changed it to tweak it. So I better make sure that that's what I did. Yeah, I think it's one by five. Yep, one by five. All right, so I'm going to do one on camera with you, and then I'll go do the rest off camera. So we've got our piece at one by five, and now you can flip this over and use your pattern to um, line it right up in the middle. So you know where your line is right in the middle. Actually, I'm going to turn it over so the pattern's up because when I turn it over, that looks good. So let me put a very small piece of tape down and I'll turn it over and I'm going to draw where my circles are through my holes that are already on there. So now when I take off the tape, peel it off carefully. No muss, no fuss. There's my circles already lined up and I'll just do the same thing by cutting with my straight ruler. Can you see? And then I'll cut the same exact way my little slits. <clears throat> Get the outer edge and then cut. Oh wait, we forgot to punch the hole. I wonder why I didn't feel it in my blade. So then punch your hole. There, now that's how I know because I get my blade right in that hole and you'll feel it. Make sure you're straight. 
hold firmly and make your I think I'm over a little too far make your cut I hate when you get the ruler there's one and I move it over a hair and cut number two and stop right in your hole there now it will lay perfectly on top you'll be able to match up your holes and lay it on top and if it's not okay you can trim your back slat a little more but see then you line it up and tape them on and it should be fine now what to do with this now that we have our first slat cut go ahead and cut all of your pieces one by five So we're going to need four of them. One inch by five inches. And then as all you have to do now is line them up and draw on the back. Like so. And they should all work out. Make sure your papers are lined up straight. And I'll even draw the little line, so I guess that wasn't necessary. But So then do that to all of them. Cut it. Put your score tape. Now one thing that I did and you can do or you don't have to do um, is you can do, here it is, you can punch these edges. I didn't do it on this one, but I did it on my first album. And the reason why I didn't do it on this one is because I forgot. And I already glued them down. But I'll show you. These I just left plain. I didn't decorative edge punch the corners. But for this one, if you have it, I just use this Stampin' Up punch. It doesn't round my corners. It inverts them, which I'll show you. So if you have something like that, you can use it. Or you can round your corners or whatever. So then I take it and... I just think it looks nice and do each of your corners and then it makes it look like let me show you on the black see how it did that I think it looks cool that way you don't have to do it you can leave it plain but if you have this punch or one similar you can do that just to give it more interest so then see how that will look with it cut out and then you just glue each of them going down I'll go ahead and get all mine done and then we'll come back and do the mats alright so I went ahead and I put I cut out the rest of my little sticky things and I went ahead and put the score tape on the back of them and I just went two strips along the edge um, here's where you might want to use your fine tip glue because let me get this unclogged which actually I don't even need the fine tip because I'm not going to take the time to unclog it because I haven't used it but anyways um, peel off your tape let me zoom in so I'll attach them for you uh, on, on camera for you so go ahead and peel off your tape but right here on the um, on the little edges I don't have the tape so if you just touch it with that glue if you have your fine tip applicator which I didn't unclog it that's all you need just to make sure it's glued down because it is going to be the front so now you want to go ahead and line up your holes in your line make it straight don't drop it like I just did 
Oh, well, that's good. And voila. Now your slit. If you have a little bit extra coming up, just go back in behind it with your scissors and trim it. So I'll go ahead and do that with all of them. Let me see if I can... What did I do with my fine tip? Of course, I dropped it or something, but I'll have to find it. So it should be okay if you don't do it. I mean, it's the ends... Um, it's the you got the majority of the tape down but I'll just it's you only need ever so much okay and then line that up perfect see very easy not so hard not so hard at all. Alright. Line up with both of my holes. They match up just fine. And get that tape off. Oh, my fine tip is sitting right there. Alright. Line up, up that one. There, look how nice. Okay, now we can glue this down into our book. And we're done with that, and we'll make the pocket sleeves. All right, so now this is the only section that's left. This is going to glue right on top. Um, remember, I want to put the side edges down first so I'm going to peel the score tape up on the end just so I can put my um, bottom flange first like that and I didn't peel it all the way off so I don't have to fight with it okay so that one's stuck and I'll do the other side Come on. I think I got glue on my blade. There we go. Stick that down. I have to use this glue because I peeled up my tape there. I glued my tape right back down. Not gonna waste it. I gotta clean this blade. Alright, so now we have all our sides glued down. Now we can peel off the tape. Am I boring you? And again, because I want to just hit my corners with this fabric tack glue, and it's not going to get anywhere, just because I want to make sure it's really good and secure when you're pulling on it and stuff, because the corners will tend to... Just I'm, I'm not putting that much on. Just getting my corners good, and might as well take it up ever so slightly. All right, so now we can place it on here and you just want to get it like right in the middle, even all the way, even from top to bottom, the sides are going to be, and that looks good. There. 
it is down and in our book. If you wanted to lay a paper underneath around this border, you can. I kind of outlined my other book in ribbon just for this page, just because I thought it looked pretty cool. I could do that when I'm done, just to keep it different. But anyway, so there it is. It's all ready to slide. This is from the other album. But now it'll slide our pockets in, and they just line up where they just come over the edge so your decorative paper still comes out. So now I'm going to show you how to make the... Um, ow! Hit my glue gun. How to make the cards that go in, which I already made all of them up except one I'll do with you online. If you're making these up on your own, like not going by this measurement, how I figured out how to do each card because they each have to go staggered and bigger. I know I put my ruler that I wanted the tip of the card to come not all the way up, but you know, just showing a border out. So I just took my ruler and I measured, I held it where I would want it. And then I measured all the way down to the end of the paper where this and, and it's six and a quarter. So I know that this first one needs to be six and a quarter and then go ahead and do the same wherever you want it to line up on the outside. So then this one would go from there to the bottom would be four and three quarters, blah, blah, blah. But I already have it measured for you and I will give you these measurements. And like I said, I already did all three of them to save three of them and I'm doing one with you. So I'll give you these measurements. I already put the backing paper on my ribbon and the cardstock. So what you will need is you will need, I'm going to give you your cardstock measurements first, and then you glue your decorative paper onto each side of the cardstock. So the first one you're going to cut four by six and one fourth. The next size will be, and this is for the cardstock. I'm going to give you the decorative paper measurements next. So the first cardstock, four inches by six and one fourth inches. The second piece of cardstock is going to be four inches by four and three quarters. The third piece is going to be four inches by three and one fourth. And the last one is four inches by one and three fourths. Okay, that's for the cardstock. So again, four inches by six and one fourth. 4 inches by 4 and 3 fourths, 4 inches by 3 and 1 fourth, 4 inches by 1 and 3 fourths, and they will line up like that. Then for your decorative pieces of paper to go on top, the first one is going to measure 3 and 3 fourths by 6, and you'll need two, one for the front, one for the back. You can use plain cardstock for the back or leave it blank if you want for journaling. Depend. This one's getting two pieces. I put two pieces on both sides of this just because leaving it white, I don't know, I didn't want it. Okay, so let me go back to that. The first decorative paper is going to be three and three fourths by six. The next decorative paper will be three and three fourths by four and a half. Cut two or one, however you want. Three and three quarters by three. Two if you want it on front and back. And the last one is three and three fourths by one and a half. Okay? So those are your decorative papers that will glue on top. Then you just put your score tape all around your paper, glue it on. But before you do that, if you want ribbon, like I did on this one, to pull them out, then you're going to take four pieces of any kind of ribbon you want or trim or anything. And I just cut mine at two inches. I cut four pieces at two inches. And you want to attach that first to your cardstock. Where's my piece that I have left? Of course, there it is. So, see, very small. I cut them even so that I cut them at two inches so that they're all, all the same size see and this is where I use my glue gun you don't have to you can use the wet glue but for sake you want to just 
take your glue gun, put on the very end just a little tiny bit of glue and then estimate where the middle is and put it right on the edge. Smash it down, then flip it over, put glue on the tip again, the very end, not a lot, and then you want to fold it over and put it so you have the loop. And they're pretty much even. Alright, so we got the ribbon adhered down. Now you can, I've already score taped my backing pa the decorative paper so you peel off the tape and you don't need glue for this the photos going on top you're not going to be pulling it so the score tape is sufficient you could even get away with using your ATG tape if you want like I said adhesives are your choice but this is how I do it so I peeled off my score tape and then I'm going to line it up on here um, I do hit my ribbon with a dot of glue gun because I just want to make sure that paper is going to stick on there and then I get it lined up evenly of course I got that crooked but that's okay I'll remake them when I I'll remake that but just for the video sake I'm getting it done can't line them up good when I got my I don't have my head blocking the camera. All right. Put a little bit of glue. And let's line it up and see if we can get this one straight. That's better. Okay, so then there's a tag. Now all you have to do is put them in your book. So go ahead and do the rest of yours and then this is how they go down into the book. We'll put the first one. There. So see how I just have it just sticking up and then this is the next size. And the next size. Voila! It's completed. See, it wasn't that bad, was it? All right, and then if you want, you can put decorative ribbon around to frame it out if you want. If not, leave it blank. There you go, guys. We created everything. Is All we have to do now is to attach our pages in but I'm still gonna wait because we are going to cover the outside in our paper first and attaching those pages will be the very last thing that we will do well no not the last we will embellish the album but I think the embellishing video is gonna be a separate video just because I, I got so many takes of this that I got to put together it'll just be easier that way I want to get it up before I lose it because it was a whole lot of work and God forbid if my computer crashes before I get this uploaded that would just be awful wouldn't it okay so we have our waterfall our hinges our credit card page our little waterfall our flap and now we're gonna I'm gonna go cut all the measurements for the outside and I'll be back all right so now we're gonna decorate and put our decorative paper all over the whole outside of the mini we're gonna do the bottom the back the top the front flap in here so I'm going to give you the measurements of the cardstock. I've already cut mine or the decorative paper. <clears throat> You're going to need three pieces cut at, in your choice, know which ones you want to put on the top and the bottom and the front flap. And that'll be out of these three pieces. They're all the same size. And I cut them at three and three eighths by seven and three fourths. Again, if you don't know what three and three eighths is, um, 
I how I how you can do it is go measure your paper on the three and a half line. And then go backwards to to the lines. Okay, so anyways, but if you have a good ruler or you know what three and three eighths is, measured at three and three eighths by seven and three fourths, cut three of them. One is for <clears throat> the top of the purse, and then we'll build our handle on that, which I'll do that next. One is for the front lip. And then you're going to need two pieces cut at five and three fourths by seven and three fourths. And this will be for the front of your purse and the back of your purse. The papers I chose, I'm going to use this one for my front. The polka dots, this one's going to be for the top lip. And the same is going to be on the back, the polka dot. So I'll put that on the back, and then a piece on the top, and a piece on the bottom. And then I'll put the feet, I'm going to, I have these little doll or wooden pieces, like I said I got these at Michael's a long time ago in a bag by the wood department, and I'm going to spray paint these or paint them gold. And then on the bottom, I will glue one, two, three, four for little feet. And, but that will come with the embellishing part. So for now, let's go ahead and start sticking, sticking down our pieces. Again, this is my five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. I cut two of them. I'm going to zoom out. And then for your flaps and stuff, cut three pieces of your choosing at three and three eighths by seven and three quarters. <clears throat> so again, I will attach the front and then put all the rest on. It should be self-explanatory how to put them on, like I just showed you. Again, where my um, where my magnets are, this is going to be the front. Make sure I want to make sure that I put my um, glue in the middle of my paper and we really want to glue around these magnets because this is going to be the main front where you're going to be pulling opening this mini so let me get my glue really good on this front I'm going to put it on the magnets and go around them and I you could be generous there so I'm sure to get a good seal all around these magnets. Okay, then go around in the center of your whole paper where I score taped around the ends. Now if you want this to... Um, I'm leaving a border around so some of the white shows. So if you don't want, if you're not going to wrap your mini album and you don't want this border to show, then you would cut your paper this exact size. I didn't because I'm leaving, I'm leaving a border around it. And then you want to carefully place and I got that pretty even and then go and push in where all your magnets are get that paper worked down around those magnets really good go around your edges see how I left the border around so if you don't want that border then cut your your papers to the exact size of your purse which I believe is six by eight yep six by eight and then those top flaps are eight by three and a half
and I'm just making sure that this gets tacked down to my magnet area really good all the way around. It's looking good. So see? All right, I'm going to glue the rest of my tops, bottoms, and backs on. I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I got all mine on. And if you have some fraying of your paper, you know, the cardstock underneath that um, frayed because of the thing, know that it's not going anywhere because we have that Tyvek under there. But don't worry about it because we're going to put a decorative trim across so it's going to be hidden and then I have a little bit of the blue where my Tyvek showed through but we're going to embellish this so it, nothing's it's not going to show so there we go now we can put our papers on the inside attach our pages so that's the back my bottom I'm going to go ahead and spray paint um, these gold and I will glue those on um, I will I'm not going to embellish this in this min in this video. Um, I'll embellish in a part two video, just because I want to get this up, and um, we have to make the booklets that go inside yet. And I'll just do that in a separate video. But this is the basic of putting this mini together. So let's go ahead and attach our pages inside our book now. Finally, and so now we open it up. Oh, the last thing we do have to do is put the handle on the top. So after I attach my pages, I'll go do that, and then the next video will be just strictly embellishing this and making the inside photo albums that I made for this. <clears throat> All right, so there's how she should look now. Now this is where you put your, pap your pages in the order that you want them to go, and I think I'm fine with the order that they are we don't need any glue because we have our score tape on already so let me zoom in okay remember we have our score tape on each side now we're going to take our folder it's going to stand up this way with your groove up if you cut one your pocket's going to go down and um you're just going to open up the bottom and you're going to peel off your tape. It's up to you whether you want to do one side at a time. I don't like to do it that way, but you can. You can do one side of the tape and get it on. I'm pretty good at this pocket opens up nicely if you squeeze it to go right over my hinges. So then you want to get it on your hinge. I open it up like this. I start at one corner so nothing's touching because I'm squeezing it open like that. And I go to the other side. Without touching, I just get those ends and then I push it down to where I want it. Just like that. And I'm right on target. If you're doing it for the first time, you got to be, you're probably better off to do one side at a time. Because once you get it stuck, you're just... Now see how this is stiff? So my pages are standing up where versus this one I didn't make with the thicker hinge. I, d I didn't double up, so they're laying totally flat. I don't want them to in this mini. I want them to stand up because I want it like a credit card. They're going forward a bit, but that's fine because now I can flip through. All right, so let me put the next page on. I'm going to zoom back a little bit. You got the idea. <clears throat> All right, so this will be my next page. Got my tape off. Open that up. Perfect. 
Didn't I make that look easy? Believe me, it took me a lot of practice. See, the page is staying up. And you could still bend them, but I wanted it to stiff like that. So now, score tape off. I know one of these has to give me a hard time just because I'm videoing it, right? And then run your fingers along each of the seams and that's in. Two more! Three more. Am I missing a page? No, they were stuck together. my head going in the video sorry because we mitered those corners that's what makes it easier to put your pages on otherwise you'd really be fighting with it so I kind of just hold that open so it's not touching my score tape like that and then I slide one corner down slide the next and then squeeze it together but if you have trouble doing that then just do one score tape side at a time <clears throat> last page Don't do me wrong. <laughs> Beautiful. Ta-da! They are all in. Look at that. See? And now look how nice our hinges are. They're so nicely done and hidden. It's just a really beautiful, neat, neat way to do it. Now, you can take scrap pieces of your paper if you want that you've had that are cut real skinny and line, you know, measure it to fill in um, all your middle gussets if you want and cut it off. And it just gives it a nicer look. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I don't know if I like the white because it kind of matches. Uh, pr I probably will do it. But anyways, now I'm going to go and get everything ready to do the, the handle. And um, I'll be back. We'll do the handle and then we'll go to another video to embellish it. And then we're going to make two little mini albums to go in here, little wallet style photo bats. Oh, we need to put our mats in. So I'll embellish these mats with pearls in it. I mean, you can embellish this thing any way you want. That's why I'm just going to do this in a separate video. Um, but the basic album is built. And our tags fit in. They're all nice. There's no struggle. Everything fits beautifully. Really nice. Close that up. We got good strong magnets. All right, I'll be back to do the handle with you. Okay, now to put the handle on the top of the mini, you're going to need to cut these pieces of cardstock. We're going to cut a piece of our chipboard. Use a scrap of your chipboard. Um, six by two and a half. And we're going to wrap that like we did the covers with um, white cardstock, just so it looks nice around the edges. And then you're going to need a piece, a decorative piece of paper, 
I didn't write this on here, cut at two and one fourth by five and three fourths. Two and one fourth by five and three fourths. And then I took, I like this gold piece to go on the top just because I think it looks like real gold hardware. And what I did to get that piece out of the collection was the big, if you're using this paper collection, I cut it out of the heart. And I just cut the ends off and measured a piece from the middle of the heart that measures two inches by five and a half inches and I got my gold piece of paper. If you don't want to go through that hassle, make it any paper that you want. Um, you can also buy sheets of gold or silver paper, whatever collection you're using, in the loose paper section at Michael's. But that's what I did just because I think when I stack these up and then I'm going to put my eye hooks in, I think it just looks like a nice piece of um, hardware on top of the purse. And then my handles will attach in there. Um, <clears throat> all right, and then I cut two pieces of the fun foam. Here's where this comes in because we're probably going to have to glue these together. And because now, if you have a different hardware or a different handle, if you don't want to go through all this, you can just tuck ribbon underneath before you put this paper on. Tuck your ribbon and then glue that on top and make your own handle or cardstock or whatever you want. Get creative. But I'm going to do this so it looks like a real genuine purse and there might be other hardware that you like better this is just what I had on hot on hand and I didn't have to go buy anything so I like I showed you before in the tools these are these little eye hooky things I just spray painted mine gold to match match the purse you can see I got gold paint on me now um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue all my papers on so they look nice and then I'm going to decide where I want my holes. I want to wrap this first. And I'll decide like equal distance there. And then I'll screw this in through the chipboard. And then I'll put glue. The reason for the fun foam is if it's... These are sharp and pointy. So I don't want it interfering with my album. So I will attach this fun foam onto the back. And that will dig right into the fun foam. And then when I glue that on there, it just raises it up so it really looks like hardware. Like, see? And you're not going to see it. So I cut my fun foam two inches by five inches. And I cut two of them. I don't know how many we're going to use yet. I don't remember. We're just going to play with it together. So first things first, let's wrap this piece of chipboard. And we're going to do that the same way we've done all of our other wrappings. And if you don't want to wrap it, you don't have to. So I'm going to, that looks perfect. I'm going to score tape around and do the wrapping. For this, I'm not even going to score tape. I'm just going to go ahead and glue, glue this on. I'll score tape my flappy ends instead. Come on, glue, get out. You're not getting away. All right. So I'll just glue that right in the middle. We got like enough to have like an inch border around the whole thing, give or take a little. I glued that down. Now I'm going to fold each side up right using my cardstock as my And then remember, we're going to miter. Each of our corners. Like so. And it doesn't matter if you're off on this, it's going to be laying down. We're not seeing it. We just want our edges to be nice. You can actually cut some of this off. It's a little long. All right, now score tape 
your edges. You can even glue this, but I'm just going to tape it because it's faster. This is going to get glued down, so it's not going to go anywhere, so we can even use... I could have used my ATG tape. You know, that tape's not any cheaper. I don't know why I even say that. I get mine, I get five rolls of this for 20 some dollars and it's 27 yards on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below where I buy my tape and my magnets. Um, my magnets I buy from somebody's Etsy. I don't know the name offhand, but I'll put the link. And my score tape I get on Amazon. And you got to watch because there's several people on Amazon that sell it. It's the particular one that I go, that I get five rolls. It comes five rolls. I have two left. It comes like this. And it comes five in a package and it's like $20. So it ends up like less than $5 a roll. Okay, so I wrapped it. Heidi ho, Heidi ho. And then I'm going to um, I need to score tape this because this I do want score taped. And I still want glue in the middle. I'm just about ready to kill that bottle's pretty much dead of glue. So now I have to go figure out what I did with my new bottle. I know I said it somewhere. I've been doing so many D stashes, if you guys watch me, because I'm cleaning out my craft room. And I wanted to get this video up, so I had to like stop cleaning my craft room. I haven't cleaned my craft room, I mean, clean it up, your mess, but like really did a deep reorganizing clean in over a year. I have glue on this craft knife, so it's not letting me lift off my tape. Um, so yeah, it's time to like get rid of stuff. Things have gotten a little messy from, you know, doing creating and not putting back. I'm starting to not know where things are, what I did with stuff. So yeah, you'll be seeing some more de-stashes. All right, so now I'm going to glue this one onto my Hot piece. Leaving that nice border around. And then I want to do the same with this gold piece. And then we'll poke our holes for where we want to put our hinges. this tape off so we're almost done with this mini I'm telling you it's almost done guys if you came this far are you tired of looking at my hands here are you wondering what the hell's wrong with her hands have you all wanted to ask that <laughs> I have eczema super duper bad and they get scarred up and they bleed and they just itch and that scarring from it and I've had every cream in the world recommended and prescribed and steroid creams and I've had injections. I've had it all. So I just live with it. It gets bad sometimes. And then working with paper really is bad for your hands to begin with. It dries them out. So it just like makes it worse. What are you going to do? I have diabetes. So I think that's like... People with diabetes get skin problems. And I do control my sugars very good, so. I don't know. Whatever. I know it looks horrible, but what am I going to do? My kids tease me when I, I can't believe you're putting those scabby hands in your videos. Well, it's a craft video. 
All right, so there we go. I have that done like that. Now I want to take my... Um, I'm eyeballing it. And I'm just going to draw two little tick marks where I think these are going to look good. Because it's just... The handle's just going to attach. So, you know, I'll go in... I'll make it equal distance on each side. Let's go in a half an inch on each side. Um, that looks like we're pretty much in the middle. So what I did was I just took my ruler and I'm going in a half, or no, did I, is that one inch? Yeah. I'll make it one inch there and I'm going to draw a little line or tick mark. Poke a little hole there. And then I'll do one inch over here. And I'm just eyeballing it to where this is in the middle. So to get it even, I'll just go across with my ruler. And know that that's one inch in. Straight across my line on my grid. So they're pretty even. And I'll poke a little. Ah, what am I doing? All right, one inch in there. Ah, broke the pen. Look at that, my pen just totally like blew up. That doesn't look straight. All right, so let me get this straight. I'll go up here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to, you know how I'm going to do it? I'm going to go one inch, put my ruler right to the edge. Make it there. Do the same on the other side. Which would be pretty much right there. Okay. So I got my two little marks now where I want to, and I, that's all I did, was I took the ruler and I lined it up along the bottom, went one inch in to your decorative gold paper, and I poked my little dot right there on the corner, and then I did the same thing on the other side using that one inch in and poked my dot at the corner, so they're pretty much even. Now if you have like a pokey tool or something, actually I want to see if this crocodile crocodile thingy works to punch my hole. Nope, it doesn't go over enough. Can I get it from that side? Nope. Alright, so now what we want to do is if you have like a piercing tool or some sort. <clears throat> anything will do. And there's my hole that I want and I'm just gonna work the hole there I went all the way through okay so now I'll do it to this one there and now take your little screwy things and put them in there and you could screw it right into the paper and you'll see now why we need the fun foam okay and then position them how you want them where's my handle good golly do I have a mess ladies and gentlemen here they are um, I decided to go with white on this. So, should have had this done.
All right. So I don't understand what these. This one has um, the hook, like if you want to make it a necklace, the eye hook thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And then the other one, I'm going to have to open this up, open this jump ring up and attach it on. So now you'll see. Now you will see, because see how deep that sticks out? I don't want it cutting into my mini. So it looks like we're only going to have to use one thing of this fun foam. And I actually think we'll be okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to be good with one. All right, so you need one piece of the fun foam cut at two and a half by five. If yours doesn't stick out, I don't know how long yours are going to be. But before I put the fun foam on, I want to glue this really good. You want to make sure which way you want these little... Um, like if you want them going this way or turn them this way. How do I want it? So I'm going to have mine going like that. Like here's going to be sitting on my purse. I'm turning them flush with my paper. Okay. Okay, so now I got them both screwed in there. See how they stick up? I don't want that poking holes in my mini album. So now I'm going to, I'm actually going to attach this with my glue gun right now because also I want to put the glue gun around those screws so they're staying in. They ain't going nowhere. And and then just push it right into those screws. Ah, don't burn yourself. There, now that gave us a cushion. And it'll also raise this up a smidgen if you want it. It's So see, it's going to look really nice. And it'll be raised up slightly so it really looks like the purse was built. And then you're going to center this piece on here. And I'm going to use some hot glue. And you can use the fabric tack. That's fine. I'm empty. I have E6000 sitting here. So that's what I'm going to use on this fun foam. It'll just take a while to dry. Cause my glue is empty um, and I'll put some glue gl glue bleh. hot glue too so I'm just putting the E6000 all over this fun foam and I'm actually gonna get it underneath the corners of this fun foam too that fun foams not gonna go anywhere All right, Whew. toxic. I do use E6000 to glue my front embellishment on this piece. You don't have to. All right, and I'm also gonna hit it with glue gun just on the fun foam, just so it's gonna tack it down now. Cause you know how long it takes for that E6000 to dry. All right, and I'll place it on the top of your mini album. Right in the center, get it nice. Let's hold it down, let that hot glue take. I'm gonna use a Q-tip here because I have some glue sticking out that I don't like.
Okay, that E6000 is going to take a while to dry, but it's going to be nice and secure. Now I will attach my handle. Um, get some pliers and pull this where the loop is, the jump ring. Where am I? And just kind of open that up and hook it on your loop. Close it back up. If you want, what I like to do, although you're not going to be carrying this around, you're not going to be wearing it, you're just going to be using it for decoration. There, so that's attached. And then this already has this, so we might as well leave it. And if you want to add charms, Go ahead and add your charms. Look at that. Ta-da! Doesn't that look adorable? Now, I'll show you what I'm going to... I'm going to... This is the end of this video. We are done. This is your whole mini album. To embellish now, um, I went ahead and spray painted my little feet. They're over there drying. So I'll come back. Stay tuned for part two video, as this one wasn't long enough. But just to give you an idea so you can start hunting around for some embellishments, um, you're going to want a really nice piece like to go. This one's silver, so it really doesn't match, but I'm going to use it on my silver one. And this is like if you find old brooches or something. Oh, I can't get this. Anyways, this is one that's going to go on a, di a different one. You want it like where your closure would be on a purse. This one I had picked up at Michael's. It was on clearance. And I'm going to use that to embellish the front of my purse. Look how pretty that's going to be. So when you open it. And then we'll put corner pieces and embellish. We'll make journaling cards and the photo mats. So if you are interested, go to part two to embellish this. But uh, there it is, guys. There is the tutorial for the purse mini. I hope you enjoyed this. It was really, it took me forever to do it. I'm sorry, but it was a, it was a lot of work. Um, so I hope you like it. Let me know how you liked it. And you know what? Please, please, please. I worked really hard doing this video. It really took a long time to do. Um, if you do make one, I'll leave my email in the description in this um, in this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. But also, if you make one, please, 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 please either do a video. If you don't do videos, send me a picture of it. I really, really, really want to see it. Um, it would really make me happy. I love it. I love sharing with you guys. I learn from YouTube, and I love to teach people. And it just takes a lot of time that I really don't have. But... There you go. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you followed me along. And thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking by. Bye, everybody.